Hey, Clemson family, there are 28 new men joining the fold today on early signing day in a busy morning that gets the Tigers recruiting class of 2023 jumping. I'm Daniel Shirley. That group includes Jay Haynes, the one signing day addition for the class. Let's look ahead and see what these guys will bring to the program. And a transfer edition, too. We'll get into all of it. I'm Bill Zimmerman. Welcome to episode 52 of the Reign Supreme All White podcast. Thanks to the thousands of you making us one of your sources for analysis of the Tigers in 2022 and into 2023, both on the major podcast apps and at youtube.com slash Clemson kickoff. Let's get to it. 26 signees this morning out of high school. It was all done before 10 a.m. from what I could see. Also added a preferred walk-on and an incoming college transfer, bringing the total number of guys joining Clemson to 28 in this recruiting class, at least the first 28. And one of those players made his decision today, committing and signing. It's Jay Haynes of Roanoke, Alabama. I like that group, and I like Jay Haynes. I know a lot of people are going to look at him, and he's not a five-star, and he doesn't run the fastest hundred, whatever that is. I think he brings a, a lot to this team and a lot to this class. So, you know, the, I think the Tigers did pretty well there at running back. We kind of stressed about running back for the last few months since we started doing this podcast. I think we've talked about running back every time we've talked about recruiting and how they needed to sign one, and they got two. And I think they got two who can really help them going forward. So solid group there at running back, but overall, this is a great, great class. It's a very deep class. We've had Jeremy Johnson of On3 in to speak with us. That was in our last episode. You know, we do our own homework as well. I see a lot of guys in this class. I've mentioned this. It's easy to see them on the playing field relatively quickly for Clemson. Even if they don't all get into the two deep as true freshmen, that's pretty unlikely. But these guys are not just projects or hopefuls. They've got ability. They've got a background that can make all of them really into familiar names within two or three years. Just a lot of talent in this group. We mentioned Haynes. He checks in at 6'0", 185 by many reports. Joins a running back room looking for more talent. Let's go ahead and run through the other names on offense, Daniel. And let's start with the backfield and maybe today's transfer. Hey, Clemson's got a transfer, right? I, I know it's not a huge name. I know it's not somebody who's probably going to start. But it is a, a transfer at quarterback. And Paul Tyson spent three years at Alabama, spent the past year at Arizona State. Maybe can fill that Hunter Johnson role a little bit like we saw last year. But Paul Tyson certainly brings experience to that quarterback group. And you look at Clemson's quarterback group right now, they need experience. We love what we saw from Cade Klubnick in Charlotte in the ACC championship game. But that's his first ever really extended period playing time. And then Christopher Vazina, who's in this class, obviously, is a true freshman. It's going to be a true freshman. So they needed some experience at quarterback, and they get it with Paul Tyson. Vazina, we've talked about before. He's 6'4", 205. By the way, the measurements that you're seeing on your screen right now, those are kind of an average across the four major recruiting services. Not all of them update. I don't want to pick one and go with it. We'll talk a little more about that later. And then Tyson checks in at 6'5", 230, also out of Birmingham, Alabama. And then we also mentioned that there were some other running backs. Uh, Jarvis Green, 5'10", 190, out of Irmo, South Carolina. And then Clemson also picks up a preferred walk-on at running back. And Peyton Strecco, 5'10", 190, out of Cumming, Georgia. Clips of all these guys, by the way, which are really cool with Don Munson's voiceover put on them from the Clemson football creative team. Check those out on Twitter and Instagram. You get a little glimpse of these guys in action. And it just kind of connects the dots on them showing up to campus. Wide receiver, the other skill position group, headlined by Noble Johnson, 6'2", 205, out of Texas. I like the wide receiver group. I do. I like the running back group, too. I, I'm really excited about Jarvis Green. I know he's, quote, unquote, only a three-star. And we're going to, you know, people get excited about stars. But I like what Green and, and Haynes bring to the team. We'll see what Streco is. I mean, he's a walk-on. So, you know, he's more of a project, but I like this receiver group. I do. I, I like Noble Johnson a lot. Hannafin sounds like a, a bigger guy, can go get the ball. He's got some speed. And I do think Tyler Brown and Kelly can add something to this receiver group. You know, maybe they're a little bit smaller, but they're probably quicker. Maybe get off the line a little bit better and create some space and get into openings. And Dabo Sweeney said today that they are going to start Kelly at wide receiver. I know there's been some talk about 
him at DB or wide receiver or whatever he is, uh, he's going to start out at wide receiver. So that is a good, solid group there for those four, I think. And I like the quarterbacks and running backs and receivers. This is a solid, solid group coming into this class. Ronan Hannafin, another one out of Burlington, Massachusetts, 6'3", 205, another big target. And then some big targets at tight end. They may need to add a little more weight to really be functional at tight end. Marcus Dixon, 6'4", 230. Olson, Pat Henry, 6'4", 210. Both really athletic. Again, really nice clips on those guys. And then the really big men, right? 300 plus on the three offensive line signees today. Zechariah Owens out of nearby Georgia. And then over to Texas for Ian Reed and Harris Sewell. Well, you know what I think about recruiting an offensive line. That's where it starts. It's great to get a great quarterback. It's great to get good receivers and running backs. But you have to hit on the offensive line. And I think they've done that with this group. Everything points to that, that they've they've got a good group coming in, that these are guys that are going to help this program. And they are big. I mean, there's no doubt about that. You just talked about their size. I really think all three of these guys are going to be able to help this program in the next few years. And maybe, you know, maybe even – get a lot of playing time these next couple of seasons. So really looking forward to what all three of them can be. Like you said, big, 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 big. I want big and nasty and mean up front. And that feels like they got that with these three guys. Really excited about Owens, nicknamed Flapjack because of his ability to pancake block pretty often. He may be a little bit like defensive tackle Peyton Page when he got to Clemson. A little conditioning time may be in order, but certainly the talent is there. And Ian Reed and Harris Sewell both spoken of as guys who might be able to contribute early if needed and lend some depth to that offensive line, which took steps in the right direction last season for sure. Check out our homepage, by the way, ClemsonKickoff.com. All our episodes are there, including our most recent three episodes where we did look more in-depth at the commits who all signed as expected today. Let's go ahead and get into the defense, and that has to be led by the line, right? And that's where you want to build a team is from the trenches out. In particular, if you really press me to name just one or two guys, I guess I'd say Peter Woods and Vic Burley. But boy, Stephelan Green, Tamarian Parker, A.J. Hoffler, David Ojigwe, all looking really, really good and just an amazing collection of talent in one recruiting class to get six guys of their caliber. Look, we're projecting here, but this could end up being one of the best defensive line classes Clemson ever signs. I, you know, I think it starts with Wood for sure. There's no doubt about that. He is a superstar talent. Remember, we had Jeremy on the other day, and, and he said that Peter Woods could start day one. You know, I've seen Vic Burley in person when playing at Warner Robins here in middle Georgia. Really talented guy. Big guy. Uh, so looking forward to seeing what he can bring as well. And then you look at these other guys. Green, Parker, Hoffler, Ojigbe. I mean, these. this is a group that could help this team. And the big piece of that puzzle too, Bill, is that's a position of need. Now, we don't know how much is going to be needed, uh, depending on who comes back and who doesn't uh, going forward. But this is a position of need. And I think this coaching staff hit here. I really do. So you're looking at a special, special group uh, coming up these next few years. As much as I like the offensive line group, I like this group even more. And I think you're going to see a group that is going to carry on that Clemson tradition of having strong defensive lines the next few years. Again, using averages for these guys, size and weight over the four major recruiting services. But you look at Vic Burley there at 6'5", 280 on average. Someone told Nick Eason the other day that he may be closer to 310 right now. So that gives you an example Sometimes these weights are collected at camps before the season, but just keep in mind when you see them hit the field in the spring, we'll have a much stronger indication of just how big they are. You look at the back seven, a couple of really strong linebackers, a lot of depth in the secondary, and I think it's led by Avion Terrell, of course a familiar name, but he just is a standout talent no matter his name, and we're hearing good things about everyone in that group. Brandon Strozier, Shelton Lewis, Robert Billings, Khalil Barnes may be an unsung hero of that group. Kylan Webb as well. And then the linebackers, D. Creighton and Jamal Anderson, both out of the Atlanta area. And that name, Jamal Anderson, especially familiar to Atlanta folks, isn't it? You know, he's, his father played for the Falcons, was a great player for the Falcons. And I think Jamal's going to be a great player for Clemson. I've, you know, I've seen him play a little bit some in our state uh, here on the high school level. Uh, he had a huge game in the state championship game 
So we're looking at a lot of Georgia talent on the defensive side of the ball in this class. And look, I've lived in this state for a long time and there is talent galore. Uh, So it's hard to go wrong by signing talent from Georgia. Let's just say that. And they have done that in this class and have really focused on the Peach State in this class, especially on defense. So I like this group. I really like Terrell, like you said. But Bill, I love Jamal Anderson. I think he has a chance to be a special, special player for this group. So we'll see, again, as as we project forward and see where it happens with this group. Remember, Jeremy Johnson said he thinks Khalil Barnes could be an underrated guy and and somebody that maybe people are overlooking a little bit, maybe because he committed late, not sure why, but that he's going to overplay what his stars were and what his rankings were coming out of high school. This class might not be done yet. There may be some guys coming in February. I know Coach Debo Sweeney has said he expected everyone that they have currently lined up to sign and become part of the team today. There may be a little more work to be done. We will keep you posted. Don't just follow Clemson Football on Twitter, even though they've got all those awesome videos. I really encourage you to go check them out. But find us, too, Clemson Kickoff, on Twitter and on Instagram, and we will keep you posted on what's going on moving forward. We just wanted to hit you with a quick episode today, wrapping up what actually took place after three episodes of looking ahead to it. But Daniel, what else is on your mind off the field as far as the program goes? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing if there's any more portal additions. I, you know, I, I think the class, like you said, is mostly done. Maybe there's maybe there's another recruit out there, uh, depending on who leaves and, and what holes pop up. We know somebody's going to leave the roster, whether they go to the NFL or they go to the portal. So who who joins this group? in February as part of the the signing class? Is it somebody uh, from the high school ranks or do they go to the portal? That's, I think that's next. And then, hey, look, we start getting ready for the Orange Bowl. I mean, I, you know, I know that the the team has been getting ready. They leave uh, coming up this weekend to go to Miami. So it's a lot of fun. There's one more game to play before we start looking ahead to 2023. I am definitely excited about that. Can't wait to be in the stadium for the Orange Bowl. Boy, these coaches work hard right now. You've got recruiting, you've got the transfer portal, you've got bowl prep. They are burning the candle at both ends and keeping it going. And their efforts certainly have been spectacular in recent years. We are glad you found us, Clemson family. We have another interview lined up for a guest coming up. We will keep coming at you twice a week. And when football does start to wind down after the Orange Bowl, we will keep you up on the hardwood with Clemson basketball and on the diamonds with Clemson baseball and softball. Until our next episode, I'm Bill Zimmerman. I'm Daniel Shirley. Go Tigers.